church. Who has it? No, like two people. Okay. I love this thing. I'm having so much fun tonight at Fuel. How are you, are you guys having fun tonight at Fuel? Oh my goodness. See, I love the 90s. Like the 90s is my favorite. I love it so much because I like grew up in the 90s and I just love the 90s. I love everything about the 90s. If I could go back to the 90s, I wish I could. Well, my name is Megan. I'm one of the leaders around here. And I, I don't know, I just thought I'd, I'd tell you a few things that were my favorite things about the 90s, okay? So number one, favorite thing about the 90s, look at this style. I mean, look at this, you guys. How often can you wear a plaid shirt around your waist and it be cool? Like, this is cool, guys. Awesome. It's great. The style, you got your jean jacket cut off. All that kind of stuff was just so cool in the 90s. Second thing, let's just talk about the movies and TV shows. Like, for me, when I was in, when I was in the 90s, I loved the TV shows in the 90s. You got Rugrats. You guys all saw that? I love Rugrats. I love Boy Meets World. Like, that was my jam. Like, oh. You got Family Matters, like shows like that, like Seventh Heaven. I know I'm, I'm, I'm totally lame, it's okay. You had some like awesome just shows and movies, like Jurassic Park kind of movies and all that fun stuff, Space Jam. You had tons of awesome movies and TV shows and uh, some of you guys might be too old for that stuff, but still, I loved it, it was awesome. And the final thing that was the best, the greatest, the pinnacle, of the 90s. Backstreet Boys! Look at this shirt right here, guys! I'm telling you, I loved, loved, loved the Backstreet Boys. Like I was telling somebody earlier that literally in my room I had posters from the top to the bottom of Backstreet Boys all in my room. Like we used to get the magazine. I don't know if you guys still do this, but I used to get magazines and we literally had no space to the point where I was like, Mom, I want to paint my room. And she's like, why would you paint your room? You have too many pictures of the Backstreet Boys up. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll take them down. Um, but I loved them. I loved the Backstreet Boys. I was a total fangirl, loved it so much. And it's just one of the greatest things about the 90s. But if I think back to the 90s, I think back to myself in the 90s, I would say that there are some things about myself and things that, that happened in the 90s that I don't love. And, and, and for me, like if I started, started thinking about this and thinking about what I wanted to talk about tonight, I started to think about, well, what were some things about the 90s that I didn't like? And, and, and it got me to this concept, and it kind of piggybacks off of last week. How many of you guys were here last week? I heard Justin killed it, right? You guys, you guys love Justin? He was awesome. I heard it was so great. I was um, in Dallas. I was at a conference, but I totally missed you guys. But I heard Justin just rocked it. It was awesome. And he talked about this 7 a.m. logic, this logic that kind of says, what's the least amount I can do to, like, get by? And, and even in our walk with Jesus, what's the least amount I can do to, like, get by? You know, you're thinking about when you're waking up for school and you're like, I don't want to wake up. I'm just going to skip the shower, skip breakfast, skip everything to get out the door and maybe make the bus. And we do that in our own spiritual life too. Like we say, okay, what's the little amount I can do to get by? If I just come on Mondays, is that enough? If I, if I, if I just hear Chris preach, is that enough? And, and so I thought about that and I thought, well, what's the flip side of that? And I think for me, I started thinking, well, if I'm thinking about the 7 a.m. logic, sometimes I have this 10 p.m. logic. And so tonight I'm going to talk about this 10 p.m. logic. And, and this is the logic that I want you guys to kind of track with me. I know it might be seem like, why are we talking about times and logics at times? I don't get it. Well, for me, one of the things, again, that I flipped back to the 90s that I didn't like is that oftentimes when I sat down, you know, at night, I started thinking about all the things that, that I just kind of failed at in life, that I messed up that night, and saw all these negative uh, thoughts started coming to my mind around 10 p.m., and I started having this 10 p.m. logic that just said, man, I wish I would have did something differently. I just missed the mark. I'm such a failure. I'm such a loser. Why did this happen? And so that's kind of the 10 p.m. logic that I want to talk tonight, and it's kind of like this. Like, I remember back when I was in school, I really wanted to be good at sports. Like, I wanted to be good at sports. I'm telling you guys, I'm just terrible. Like, the reason why you guys don't see me play dodgeball out there is because I would just get hit in the face all the time. Like, I'm just terrible at sports. But this one day in school, I remember that we were going to play softball, and I was like, this is the day. This 
is a day that I'm going to prove that I can, I can be good at sports. That I, even though I was picked last, I'm going to be picked first next time. You guys, you guys maybe had those moments. Have you guys ever had those moments where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to prove them wrong. So we're, we're playing softball, and I go up, and I'm, I'm about to bat. And so I get up to the plate. I'm getting ready to bat. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. I, maybe I was practicing or something. I don't know if I did or not, but I was so ready. And so all of a sudden, the ball gets thrown, and Bam! I get knocked in the face and I fall on the ground and I'm like crying, my glasses break, I get escorted off the field and it's just terrible, like it was just so bad and, um, and I just, that's one of the reasons why I don't want to play sports anymore, but, uh, but seriously, and then that night though, as I'm like laying down in bed, I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm just such a mess up. I can't go back to school to face my friends. Like, why didn't I just hit the ball? Why didn't I at least move out of the way? Like, what the heck was I thinking? That I just stood there and let this ball hit me in the face. And I just start to relive those moments again and again. And I start to just get negative on myself. Man, how am I going to face my friends? How am I going to face the people at school? I'm such a loser. I'm so, so terrible at sports. Like, life is just terrible. And I just start to get those thoughts in my head. And I think the same thing goes for maybe you guys. Maybe there's times in, in, your, in your school, like maybe you just go and you try to meet a new friend and you say hi to them and they just ignore you completely. And then you're like, oh, did I say something weird? Was I like, did I smell? I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's one of you boys. You're like, hey, that girl looks good. And you go and you're like, hey, baby. And she just like turns and walks away and runs away. And you're like, oh, dang. Did I just mess up? What, what happened here? And you just start to think of that 10 p.m. logic when you're, when you're laying your head at the pillow and you just start to get tired. You just start to think of all those days' mistakes. The time that you messed up in school, you did bad in school, the things you might have said that just weren't right. Maybe the time that you yelled at your parents and you know you shouldn't have and you're like, man, I just missed the mark. I just messed up. I'm such a failure. And see, I think we can start to get in that 10 p.m. logic but here's the thing, is that if we start to stay in that logic, we start to feed those thoughts. Those thoughts that say, man, I'm just, I'm not good enough. Man, I just, I messed up, I'm a loser, I'm ugly, I'm this, I'm that. And you start to just feed those thoughts. And just like if you got a new puppy, how many of you guys have ever had a puppy? Anybody have a puppy? Okay, I had a puppy like a little while ago. She's eight or nine now, so she's not a puppy anymore. But when I first got her, she was this big and she was so cute. She was a really, she's a Shih Tzu. She's just the cutest little thing ever. And so what did I do? Though I had to feed her, right? I had to feed her puppy food. So I fed her puppy food. If you don't know anything about puppy food, it makes them grow really fast, like put on weight and stuff like that. So all of a sudden, my itty bitty dog is like this 25 pound Shih Tzu, which if you know anything about Shih Tzus, they're not supposed to be 25 pounds. So I have a 25 pound Shih Tzu that's huge. And it's because I fed her. Like I fed her every day. I feed her. Um, and and I, wanted her to, I wanted her to grow when she was a puppy and to become a full size dog. And maybe you have other dogs. Like I know Abby. Abby and here she has a dog a dog like and I'm sure it started off as a cute little puppy like this and then it's like bam like a monster like but as you feed the dogs they grow right you guys get that you feed your dogs they grow same thing as you guys as you guys are growing you feed you 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 eat food you grow with little kids you eat food they grow same thing same thing fuel applies to our thoughts when we feed our negative thoughts, they begin to grow in our mind. And all of a sudden, one thought that's like, man, you know, I'm just not that good at sports turns into I'm a loser at life because I can't do sports. And that's what happens when we start to feed those thoughts. We start to think about them day after day. We start to think about the moments that we miss the mark. And then all of a sudden, we can go from just having a little like, okay, I stumbled and I fell and I'm kind of klutzy to I'm a complete klutz and always a klutz. And then we can feed those thoughts in our mind. And so tonight, I just want to talk about how do we break those thoughts? What do we do to get through those thoughts? And, and so I want to talk through a story that I think really... I think examples how to, how to work through and how God can just interview in, in those thoughts. And so we're going to open up into Exodus 32. So in Exodus, here's what's happening. How many of you guys know about Moses? Big Mo? Big Mo. Everybody say Big Mo. 
Big Mo. Okay, so Big Mo, if you didn't know about him, you know, he became a leader. He took the Israelites. They were in slavery in Egypt. You know, he helped them get free from that. You guys might have heard about the 10 plagues and all that kind of stuff. If you didn't, side note, if you're not sure about this, maybe it's your first time in church, I want you to know, it's okay. We're glad you're here, and there might be some things I say and you're not sure about. That's why we have these things called life groups. We want you to talk to your leader later. We're just so glad you're here. But, but Moses, he was, like, going about, and he, like, helped the Israelites get free from Egypt. They get into the desert. They, like, part the Red Sea. You guys remember that? Whoa, Red Sea part. And then he walks on dry ground. Like, God did that, all that kind of stuff. Then when they were in the desert, God, like, provided manna, which was, like, bread for them to eat. They provided quail. They provided water. God, like, did all this crazy awesome stuff in the desert. And so here's where we pick up the story. So all that has happened. Like they've seen God do the plagues. They've seen God, you know, split the Red Sea. They've seen God provide for them with food and water and all this stuff. And then we come into Exodus 32. And what's happening here is that God speaks to Moses like, Moses, here's my commandments. And he like tells him, and then he goes to the people. Hey, can you guys live up to this? This is going to be a promise. If we do these commandments, then it's a promise that God's going to be with us. And you guys know the Ten Commandments, right? Ten Commandments, thou shalt not blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so murder, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery, all those kind of thou shall nots are the Ten Commandments. And so God asked him, he said yes, the people say yes, so he goes up to meet with God in this, uh, in Mount Sinai, and he's like meeting with God, and God is writing the Ten Commandments on these tablets, and so he's gone for 40 days, everyone say 40 days, 40 days, 40 days. that's a long time, right, that's like over a month long, that's kind of long, and the people of Israel are waiting for Moses, they're waiting for him to come back down to give him the Ten Commandments to, after he talks with God. And this is what happens while they wait. Exodus 32, 1. When the people saw how long it was taking for Moses to come back down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron. Come on, they said, make us some gods who can lead us. Who, who, we don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. All of a sudden, they were waiting. They were waiting to get out, and then all of a sudden, they, they're like, hey, what happened to Moses? We don't, we don't know about this Moses. It's like they forgot. They suddenly hadn't heard from God or seen God or spoke to God, and they just kind of forgot. They forgot the power and the promise that God had for them, and they suddenly just forgot. And I think this happens in our life too. Well, we Maybe we're coming to church, maybe we're coming to fuel, and, and we're spending time with God, and then all of a sudden we forget who God is, and then that moment we start to think about those thoughts again. Maybe it's the way that we've just messed up. We start to have those negative thoughts. Uh, man, I wish I could have done this better, this better, this better. We have those negative thoughts in our life that start to creep in because we just don't spend time with him. We haven't been here. We haven't been around friends who can encourage us in our walk. We, we haven't spent time in our Bible knowing the truth. We haven't spent time talking to God. And we just forgot and that's what happened here. They just kind of forgot. They're like, hey, well, uh, I forgot. Let's, let's, we don't know who this Moses guy is. Where is he? What's going on? Okay, well, let's just go back to our old ways. They just went back to their old ways. And so many of us, the same thing happens. The moment where we just kind of like, man, well, huh, I haven't been in a while. Let me just go back to my old way of doing things. And that's when I think our negative thoughts start to set in. We start to do our old ways. And for them, that was where they worshiped this golden calf, which to us is like, what? A golden calf? Like, that doesn't even make sense to us, right? But that was, I get it. There's weird things in the Bible. It's okay to say that's weird. That, it's okay. And that was weird, but back in their day, that was kind of normal. What people did is they worshiped um, golden things, and, and, they, and so they went back to that. They started worshiping this golden calf. And so many times in our life, in our heads, we start worshiping our golden calves in our head, those thoughts, those negative thoughts in our mind, and we start going back to them. Man, I'm just such a loser. I'm so ugly. And we start to almost worship it. And, and that sounds weird, and, and they like worshiped it and celebrated it, and you're like, well, I don't, I don't worship my thoughts. I don't celebrate my bad thoughts. But here, I want to say they call it a pity party for a reason, right? Just saying, we start to almost like make them out to be gods in our life because we're like, we want, we like that, that we always feel negative. It's not that we like it, but we just start to always go back to it. We always go back to the negative thoughts, back to the negative thoughts. Man, and you almost like start to seep in those negative thoughts. 
And so here's what happens in this story, though, is that Moses comes down. He comes down from the mountain. He sees this. He sees them worshiping and celebrating and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, he's mad. He's like mad that this is happening. And so in Exodus uh, 32, 19, it says, when they came near camp, Moses saw the calf and the dance, and he burned with anger. He threw the stone tablets to the ground, which were the Ten Commandments. He threw them to the ground, smashing them at the foot of the mountain. He breaks the Ten Commandments. God had written these commandments. Again, this was to this was say, hey, when, if we do these things, God promises to be with us. His power is going to be with us. And he broke those. He broke them. But the people of Israel had already broken them by going back to the old things. I think maybe in your life, you're thinking the same way. You're like, man, I've broken so much. I'm broke. I messed up. I, I, I decided to follow Jesus last week, and this week, I'm already doing the things that I used to do. I decided that I wanted to, to love Jesus and honor him with my thoughts, but I'm already thinking that I'm just, I'm just messed up. And you start going back to those thoughts. You think, I'm just so broken. I'm so messed up. And those 10 p.m. logic thoughts just start going in our mind again and again. But here's the promise, and here's what I really want you to get. This is the verse that I really want you to get. And this is what really spoke to me out of this whole message is this verse right here. And it's a couple of chapters later in Exodus. Exodus 34, 1. The Lord said to Moses, chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on the words that were at, on the first tablets, which you broke. I'm going to say it again. The Lord said to Moses, chisel out two stone tablets like the first one, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. God is saying, I will fix what's broken. I will fix what's broken. I will rewrite what was gone. The first tablets, Moses broke, and they were messed up. They were broken. But God says, I will take those broken things, and I will make them new. I will renew them. I will rewrite what was on those. And some of you in here, I think, need a rewrite in your life. You're saying, man, I just feel like a failure. I just feel those negative thoughts all the time. I go to bed, and I just think I'm the worst person in the world. God wants to give you a rewrite. He wants to give you a rewrite in your life. And so... I just want to get practical here. What does this mean? How do we actually beat those thoughts? How do we actually overcome this 10 p.m. logic? And I think it's, it comes so clearly from this. And that's this idea of, of that we need to reject and replace. So everyone say reject, reject. and replace. Okay. Now this side, you guys are going to say reject and you're going to say and replace. Okay, ready? Ready on three. Ready? One, two, three. Reject, reject and replace. Okay, Awesome. We need to reject and replace those things. See, that, see, Moses had broken those things. They were gone, but God replaced them with new ones. And in the same way in our thought life, when we start having these thoughts, maybe it's the thought that, that I am just unloved. You need to reject that thought because that thought isn't truth. That thought is a lie. That's not truth. We get truth from God's word, and we know that we are loved because we are God's children, and we are dearly loved children. So you need to reject and replace that thought with that I am a dearly loved child of God. Does that make sense? And so I want to just go through a couple, and I want you guys to say reject and replace with these. Maybe you start thinking that you are ugly in your life, and you need to reject with I am a masterpiece of God. That was good. I was really good. Maybe you need to start that, thinking that you were a mistake. You need to re and know that you were planned and have a purpose by God. Maybe you start to think that I won't become anything. You need to reject. That was good. You guys, the reject people are good. That God has great plans for you. And so whenever you get that thought, that thought in your mind, like I'm a loser, you need to Awesome. So in your life, you need to reject the thoughts that aren't from God and replace them with God's truth. And let me tell you, this isn't easy. I'm not saying this is the easiest thing in the world because I get it. It's not. You know, you're going to go through your life and you're going to feel those thoughts and you're going to think those things and you have to reject them constantly and replace them in your life. And so um, to kind of end, I want to just tell this story that I think kind of illustrates this. Um, about these, this is a fable, so this isn't a true story, but it's a fable. 
Um, and so it's a story about these frogs, okay? I love frogs, so this is why I'm telling the story. I love frogs. So, um, but this group of frogs were walking through the forest, and all of a sudden, t- two of them fall in this deep hole. It was a really deep hole. And so... Yeah, it's really sad, right? They fall in the sea pole. And so the other frogs are gathered around this hole, and they're saying to them, you know, it's too deep. You're not going to be able to get out. You're not going to be able to get out. But they, they start jumping, trying to get out, trying to get out, trying to get out. And the, the other frogs are yelling, just stop. You're wasting your time. You're never going to get out. You're never going to get out. And they keep jumping. They keep jumping. Finally, one of the frogs just decides that, that they're right, and she can't take it anymore, and she just ends up falling over and dies. She just stops. She stops trying. But the other frog just keeps going. Even though they're shouting at him constantly, hey, give up. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. It's pointless. Stop, stop, stop. He just keeps jumping. He just keeps jumping. And eventually, he jumps out of the hole. And the other frogs are like, man, we're glad you jumped out of the hole, but, but why didn't you just listen to us? Like, we're surprised. Like, what happened? And the frog explained to them, I don't, I don't know how this worked, but it's a fable, so, you know. Um, but the frog explained to him that he was deaf. And the whole time he thought that the, the frogs around him were encouraging him. And so he was able to jump out of the, the hole because he thought they were yelling louder for him to jump out. And in your life, I want to say is that there's going to be moments where in your life, I think the negative thoughts in your head are going to be screaming at you. They're going to seem like that's the only voice that's in your head. But I want you to know is that God wants to reject those things in your life and to replace them with his truth and his word. He wants to be the ones on the outside encouraging you, saying, no, you are beautiful. You're my masterpiece. You're loved. You're a child of God. You are so precious to him. You have a plan and a purpose. And those are the things we need to replace those in our lives. And so um, I just want to pray. And we're going to go into another song right now. And during the song, maybe I just want you to take a moment, maybe not even come up here. I mean, if you want to come up, that's fine. But maybe you need to take a moment and just think about your life. What are some of those thoughts that come to your head, those 10 p.m. logic thoughts that just keep circling in your head? And what do you need to do to replace those in your life? And so let's just pray for a moment. Um, God, I just thank you so much for just um, every student, every leader in here, God, um, I know we all face those moments where we just think, man, we missed the mark, that we're not good enough. Those lies and those voices come to our head, God. And I just pray that we can just um, realize that those are not from you and we just reject those and we replace them with your truth. That we're your child, that we are loved, um, that you care about us so much, God, that we're your masterpiece. And so um, I just lift up the students to pray that you can help us to do this, God, that we can move forward to reject and replace those things in our life. And so we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.